three, two, there we go. Guys, welcome. It's Jeff from Home Renovation. We are live on Tuesday, as always, at 5 o'clock. A special show tonight, okay? We are going to be diving into the world of Home Depot and Lowe's, and maybe a little bit wider. Let's We can go a little broader than that, but specifically the two retail giants in the convenience store space related to um, home renovation, building materials, fixtures, finishings, floorings, all of that stuff, okay? It dawned on me not too long ago, and, and we're going to try to keep things civil tonight, if it's at all possible, all right? I'm wearing my eyeballs because I got some reading to do. Um, I have my own opinions about these two stores, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we're going to share them. Nobody else has had the, the guts to do this, so I'm doing this because, listen, I've, I've been in Canada, I've been working down the States, I've been at both stores in both countries, and I'm not sponsored by either one of those industry giants so that I can have my own opinion, okay? So I'm going to just be able to be free as a bird here. We don't have to worry about stepping on toes. We do have to be truthful. So if you got an experience, you want to share it in the comments section, by all means. We're going to take questions when we're done talking about some of this stuff. But we're going to dive right in here because what we're looking at is to determine this. Where's the better service? What's the better prices? Where's the better product? Um, what's your experience been with their installation services, right? Because we got a labor shortage going on. I'm just curious. Have you had experiences, good, bad, otherwise, over the years? Are things getting better, getting worse? How are they for quality control on the staff they're hiring to do those things? We're going to dive into all of this. We're going to try to be into the chat here. Happy Jeff Day Tuesday. Oh, and I should probably tell you, tomorrow's my birthday. I'm turning 53. And if you want to buy me a drink for my birthday, then just become a member tonight. <laughs> Don't even need to renew. <laughs> yeah, that'll be that'll be enough. That's good to go. All right. Just joking around. Let's just get into this. Um, what one I want to start with here, first of all, is I took some time to refresh my memory. I did a little jaunt, okay? And I and I walked around the stores, and really there's there's not a whole lot of differences anymore, but let's talk about what some of them are. Some of them are this. Uh, I went to Lowe's, and they're carrying brand names in their outdoor services area, okay, like their, their barbecues and stuff. They're carrying Traeger smokers. Wow. And Napoleon grills. Now, I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from, those brand names are synonymous with quality. And I was kind of shocked. And then I saw the sticker price. I went, oh, okay, now that makes sense, right? Some of that stuff is not the high end of those quality brand lines. At the end of the day, if you want to have a real quality barbecue, you don't shop at a box store. You got to go to a barbecue store and they'll show you all of the brands and all of the, all of the wonderful things that you can buy. But if you're looking for something that's uh, uh, decent quality, that brand name product there, this for the $500 range, is probably not a bad choice, right? Like you just don't want to buy something that sounds English, but isn't. You know what I mean? And, you know, you get what you pay for. So if you want to buy a $200 barbecue every year, then go right ahead for the rest of your life. Uh, for me, that would represent about an $8,000 barbecue. I'm going to buy one that's going to last my lifetime for like a 1000 bucks. That's just my purchase and decision. Anyway. All right. Let's just jump in the chat real quick. Lots of people saying happy birthday. Wow. Yeah. Well, thanks. Cheers, guys. Uh, it is a happy birthday. I'm actually loving my life right now. I'm here in a dining room of an Airbnb here in Ottawa. We're up here filming a series, and then I'm heading back to Florida to finish off the trailer. Those videos are going to keep on coming, though, because we're, we're well ahead of the production schedule. We do not have the stress of having to do the work and then edit the video and then upload it. And then, <laughs> like, you know, in this world, the dog is wagging the tail, not the other way around. Okay? And I'm loving it. Um, so thank you so much for all of that, guys. One of the things I want to talk about tonight also is what should they be doing? What do you want to see at their, your local box store? What did they used to do that they don't do anymore? Let's bring back some of the good stuff that made us love them in the first place. Because I kind of feel, is it just me or is it <laughs> a Canadian maple whiskey on me? There you go. Super chat from Julian. Cheers, buddy. Now, you're already a member and you're doing that. That's just crazy. All right. Um... One thing to remember, yeah, there's a great point uh, programmer just brought up here that the Lowe's in Canada, they bought into the market not too many years ago, and now they've sold out of the market again. They're going back to Rona, different buying group, maybe some of the same players, but it's going to be back to Rona. Um, that's really, really interesting. 
Yeah, I can look for some big discounts. I would not be surprised. So cheers to everybody who's jumping in there in the chat. Listen, um, you all know how I feel about Home Depot and Lowe's. If you've been around it all, you know that I consider them to be like a convenience store and I use them. Like I love the convenience of being able to go get everything at once, right? Like, you know how I work. I'm on a job site. If I, if I run into a problem and I need a part, I make a list and I move on to the next part of the project, the next part of the project. And then at lunch, I go out and I hit the store and I fire off my whole list. That's how I work. I love the convenience of it. But when I'm making my major purchases, I try to deal with different suppliers on a regular basis. Because remember, what happened in the old days is these Lowe's and the Home Depots, they, they kind of took over the market. They ate up all the independents. And so that it kind of sucks because they had great service. Shout out if you love Beaver Lumber. Do you remember them? Right? Come on now. Anyway, uh, I still find great service, so I have to go into the country now. So what I do is I go to the, I go outside of town. And I go into these little places like, I'm going to shout out to Perkins Lumber in North Gore. Okay? Perkins Lumber is a home hardware store. These guys are amazing. They've had the best cedar available in Ottawa since I even got to this town and probably before then. They're amazing. And they're a local family operated kind of operation, right? The guys in the store know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> they can take an order without getting dumbfounded and confused because they can't find a sticker. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do custom orders as well for the roofing. Like the last shed we did, the metal roofing, I got it there. The cedar deck for my daughter, I got it there. I think there's a dozen other big box stores between her house and Perkins, but I drive south on purpose because I know I'm going to get the quality I'm looking for. Anyway, let's dive into this. We're going to deal with a few little issues. First of all, um, let's talk about service, okay? In my personal experience, I found that Lowe's gives you a better personal service experience, okay? I'm open up to the chat. If you don't have that same thing going on, maybe it's because it's the store near you. But my basic experience is this. Home Depot, they train their kids now to know what products are in what aisle. And Lowe's, they'll take you to the product. That's just me. Maybe that's a store specific. But like I said, I've been in both stores all over Ottawa. We got four or five here. I go to shop in all of them, depending where the job is. I've been down to the States. I've been to more than one Home Depot down in the States. Uh, actually, down in the States in Florida, the Home Depot right next to my where the house is that I was working on. It was a tiny one. It was kind of a disappointment. It was like a half a Home Depot. And so everything I wanted to do, I couldn't do there. I had to go drive a half an hour, 40 minutes out of my way. And they didn't have tool rental there, which is the first big thing that's different. <sighs> Back in the day, Home Depot had tool rental and Lowe's didn't. I think they're finally in the rental game. Let me know in the comments section what city you're in and does Lowe's rent tools in your town? I am dying to know the answer to this. We can help the community out if we would all share our information in the comment section as we go along, okay? Because um, I tried this a few years ago and they're like, no, we don't rent tools. I'm like, well, if you're gonna come to Canada and compete against a Home Depot, you better be at least offering the same services. And they didn't. And now they're leaving Canada. Big shocker. Anyway, <laughs> one of the other things I wanna talk about between the Home Depot, Home Depot and the Lowe's, Home Depot is more likely to have a restaurant inside the front of the store. Is that something that you guys experience? I'm just gonna check the comments here in a second here, right? Because I mean, I've had, uh, they used to have a Harvey's, love grabbing a burger at lunch, right? Harvey's burgers are amazing. And I don't think Harvey's is even in the States, but if you know Harvey's, shout out to Harvey's, I love it. Now that we do a, a Subway in that same restaurant. Great, love having an option. They even have a breakfast menu. So that was awesome, right? You get to organize your day in one-stop shop. I would love to see all of these stores having some sort of food service, even if it's just permission for someone to have a decent hot dog cart, you know? It's so frustrating to race out at lunchtime and there's no food there. You gotta go make another trip somewhere else and get in line and it drives me crazy. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Um, let me just get my head screwed on because I could rant about this stuff all day long. We're gonna go through a little list. There you go. Uh, there are more Home Depot stores than Lowe's. Okay, so they cover a bigger geographical area. They're more likely closer than the other, but of course that's all relative. 
Um, Home Depot is like just shy of 2,000 stores now, and Lowe's is at 1740. But they're a little disappointing. They haven't put a store out in the American islands in the Caribbean yet. So all the folks in Puerto Rico are like, what Lowe's? Who, who's Lowe's? <laughs> it's Home Depot or bust, I guess, eh? Anyway. Uh, well, that's really interesting. I got a comment here from Ross. says that Lowe's in Toronto has a Stevenson rental. Um, that's a major brand name in the rental tool rental business in town. So that is really a nice collaboration. That would be nice to see more of that. My goodness. Anyway, um, let's talk product quality. Why not? This is, this is really the biggest issue, isn't it? Like it, over the years, we've all seen the same thing. The prices are going up and the quality is going down. Now there's two things in these stores that we've really got to separate. One of the commodities, uh, insulation, the drywall, the lumber, the plywood, all this kind of stuff. Okay. It's hard for those things to get any worse. But at the same time, lumber is graded one, two, three, um, right? So there's there's good, better, best, and, and garbage. I found the lumber in the United States to be actually much better than the lumber I'm getting up here in Canada. Just saying. I don't know why. Um, I have no explanation for that. I just really liked it. It was straight and true, and it wasn't a bunch of hockey sticks. I, I don't know if Home Depot is intentionally trying to make hockey sticks because we're Canadians, but... That's what we get. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. When it comes to product quality, um, you want to take a look at things like that are sold off the shelf. Okay, it's a convenience store. After all, that's where we're. So think of yourself going into a 7-Eleven, and uh, your 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 wife said, "Go get a loaf of bread." You go to 7-Eleven, they sell one kind of bread, and that's what you buy because that's what's there because that's the solution to the problem. That's not how you should be shopping for your building materials for your home. I'm just saying, you really want to make sure that you're, you're, you're exposing yourself to the best quality at the best price. Because if you were, take the extra two minutes to go to the grocery store, the bread's a buck and a half or two bucks. But in the variety store, it's five bucks for the same loaf. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the convenience has a price. Don't forget, box stores are always on major streets with the highest commercial rents, with the biggest parking lots. Right, because they have to have a parking space for every certain amount of square feet for the commercial store according to building code. So they get parking for eight thousand people. I mean, they can only stick two thousand people in the store. That's the way the world works. Don't ask me about it. I don't write the rules. But it costs a bloody fortune to put that much pavement in a, in a store. All right. So expansion is expensive. Staffing these places is expensive. Training them is expensive. Maybe not as expensive as it used to be. <laughs> anyway. Um, when we come to product quality, you want to really take a look at uh, breaking everything down by department. Okay, so I found the outdoor department actually was pretty well stocked. You got Husqvarna, you got Steel, you got some good brand names out there, right? You got all of the high-powered battery tools. That's great. And then you turn the corner, you get the electrical aisle. They got all your basic electrical supplies. Like if you were trying to wire a basement or switch out of a, a, a light fixture or make a conversion from one thing, you can basically get away with these departments. They're not bad. The plumbing department, again, not bad. Both the stores offer the same stuff. They've got all the fittings. They've got all of the bells and whistles. Where you really get into where these stores differentiate is when you get into the fixtures and the flooring, right? And before we go there, let's talk about appliances. Oh, my God. What are they doing? I did some research just to get prepped for the show because I haven't been in the appliance shopping market for a while. So I did some checking around and I understand how they operate. So they go to Samsung and they say, hey, uh, Samsung is Home Depot. We need, we need some fridges. We need this model, this model, this style, this style. And we need our own model numbers because we have a guaranteed lowest price policy and we can't have anybody else selling the same model number as us. And they say, fine, here's this fridge and the drawers will be black. And then Lowe's says, we need a similar fridge, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then here's this fridge. The drawers will be white, different model number. Same fridge. I checked it out today. The Lowe's fridge was $800 cheaper. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions, but don't be afraid to shop. When you're shopping, shop by a thing comparison. Open both web pages at the same time. The sizes, the square footage, the the pros, the cons, the features, the benefits, because these manufacturing plants are doing a run. They're going to knock out a few hundred of this. They're going to change a die over. They're going to put in a different drawer into the assembly. They're going to knock out another few hundred of that. 
It's the same damn thing. $800 difference. Worth finding out. Anyway, just saying it is amazing out there. Now, product quality is an issue. Generally, my experience with these, these companies is if, if it's a fixture or a finish and it's in stock on the shelf, it is the lowest quality product at the highest possible price. Because if you're not willing to organize your time and place an order in advance, and you come to the store, the convenience store, like can you imagine going to a convenience store to buy a car? Like it'd be a, a $200,000 Hyundai because that's what they do to their pricing. It's like, well, I'm the only guy selling a car at two o'clock in the morning, right? That's what the convenience store does. Well, that's what they're doing with you. If you don't organize yourself and buy quality, you're gonna buy what's on the shelf. Have you seen the quality of the cabinets they sell in the kitchen department? Both of these places have lost their minds with how cheap they're making their cabinets. It's absolutely disgusting. I had a horrible experience with a vanity the other day from the Home Depot. I bought a vanity. I had it shipped. It showed up on its side instead of standing straight up, even though there's a great big red arrow saying ship this way. Of course, it was broken and damaged. That was the second attempt to deliver it. The first time they delivered it across the street, it was a five foot vanity, right? I didn't have the capacity to drag that up my stairs and bring it to the house myself. So I had to call them up. They sent the delivery truck out, picked up the vanity, would not bring it across the street and give it to me because I hadn't paid for the delivery into the house. Now, Home Depot, you're going to have to work on this one because the default on my, my checkout was across the threshold. But the company that delivered it had it on their paperwork as just to the curb. And so we got a big argument. Blah, blah, blah. Lady on the other end of the phone was wonderful at Home Depot. So congratulations on your training there. But she couldn't solve the problem. So I had to wait. So it took me three months to get a box delivered from 200 feet away into my door. I'm just saying that kind of stuff shouldn't be happening. You got to work out on your systems a little bit better. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Anyway, um, so product quality is always going to be an issue. Okay. You're not going to find the best quality there. The thing is that really burns my butt is that they want to charge you good money. Like it's cheaper for them to deliver a cabinet that's destroyed and then cheap, just ship another one. Like how many times do they have to ship things twice? What am I paying for? How, how often are they going to send me something broken? And then they start to realize that, wait a minute, maybe it wasn't worth a thousand bucks. Maybe it's only worth 500. I'm just paying twice because <laughs> they can't figure out how to ship things. I don't know. Anyway, guys, listen, um, box stores, we're going to call them convenience stores. They sell the cheapest product at the highest price every single time. Take a look at their profit and loss statements for the last few years. Okay. These two companies together sold $250 billion in the U.S. alone last year. To put that in perspective, the NBA only does $40 billion a year in sales when they're not on strike or upset or, or going through a pandemic, okay? That is how huge this business is. Last year in the United States, you guys built one and a half million homes. $100,000 of building materials each turns into a one and a half trillion dollar industry just to supply materials for new home construction. Forget about all the commercial and all the residential remodeling and, 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 and DIYers. Forget about all that. This is a multi-trillion dollar industry, okay? You've got to play smart. There are better options, better prices, better quality out there if you're not in a hurry. But if every time you wanna do something, it's Saturday morning, let's go get our stuff. You've bought the lie that that's where you go. It's an option, it's not the option. Now, let's move on from there. Uh, I have bought kitchens from both Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, bought off the counter off the shelf, and I've ordered them from their kitchen design store. Most of these places are seem to be pretty well staffed. They're somewhat competent. They've got good ideas. Nice to see, right? So, I mean, I'm not saying that that's not an option. And they sell basically the same brands that everybody else sells. They have discounts and deals, and, and, and that system seems to work. The same with the windows, by the way. If you want to order windows from Home Depot and Lowe's, don't buy the stuff on the shelf. It's just for sheds. It's called utility quality. Don't lie to yourself and saying, I'm going to buy this and put it in my house. It's utility quality, okay? The good stuff you have to order. You have to wait in line like everybody else, and you can order windows there for six, eight, ten-week delivery, depending on supply and demand issues. That's a great service, all right? Now, 
let me just go through some of my notes here. Oh, did you know that the Home Depot and Lowe's, when it comes to the installation services that they both provide, they have some really unique things going on. Um, home, Lowe's, for instance, they have a labor warranty. So if you're not happy, they can refund you the labor. But might I suggest, and can someone confirm this for me? I'll read the notes in a second. They still sold the product under the guise of getting it installed. They hired somebody to do the installation and they have a labor guarantee, which means they also back charge that company and they're getting screwed out of their payment. Oh, and they're gonna keep their profit of that share of the work because they work on profit share with all of these contracts. Not, a, not, not the greatest you know, comfort feeling to know. And I have heard so many horror stories from people who've done installation services from these companies. Home Depot's better. Um, in my mind, at least they're doing a criminal check on everybody that's coming to your home, <laughs> right? Like, like they're doing, they're doing, um, uh, they're doing health and safety training instead of how to actually install stuff training. My God. Anyway, this is this is the extent of it. Hey, yeah, you're licensed, you're legal, um, you've got your taxes in order, and your business is running, and the government's not chasing you down. You can work for us. Uh, go and take product into into our customers' homes. We don't have a clue who you are. And we'll try you out for a little while. And if everything goes fine, then great. This is it. Like you, you, you'd be picky of bringing people into your home. Don't believe that they're being vetted to any extreme at all. Okay, I've known people that have worked for installation services at these stores. They are, how shall we say, um, not to be trusted to babysit your children. In my experience. Anyway, maybe I'm wrong. If you've had a great experience with installation, then let us know. Oh, my goodness. Okay, another big difference in the paint department. <sighs> Home Depot has got a bit of a leg up on, on, on Lowe's here because they've been marketing bare paint for a long time. And they have four different products of bare on the wall now, okay? Anywhere from $50 to $100 here in Canada to buy a gallon of paint from Home Depot. If that just sounds wrong coming off my lips, then, then I'll say it again. 50 up to $100 for a gallon of paint. I just finished filming a video. I compared all four of them on the same wall. I'm not going to tell you the results of it, but it was fun to do. All right. No one else is going to be able It took 10 minutes for the lady in the paint department to even comprehend that I wanted the same color in all four different paints. <laughs> Never heard of that in real life. I'm like, I'm going to test out which one's the best. Yeah, so we'll have that video coming up soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and, and share this video with people if you know, you think they might learn something here that's valuable today. This ought to be fun. All right. Um, the bear paint is up against, matched up in Canada. It's matched up against the Glidden, okay, the Dulux line. And it's the, the um, uh, commercial lowest line of, of Dulux. So if you happen to stumble into a Dulux one day and say, okay, I'm going to grab that $30 paint. I don't want to spend the 100 bucks," And then you try it. It's like painting water, okay? It's really only designed for commercial spray applications. And if you're using a brush and roller, you're going to be really disappointed. And then you're going to be reinforced the fact that bare is the way to go. This is how they market their, their paint line. Over at Lowe's, they, um, they have Valspar and they have Sherwin-Williams. And... Pretty sure that's the same down in the States. If anybody can confirm that, that'd be great. Um, the paint video is going to come out in a few weeks. Of course, we've got to send it off for editing and stuff because I don't edit my own stuff. Okay. I work with a hammer. All right. I'm not an editor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, I'm going to tell you right now that Sherwin-Williams Paint, they have uh, seven different product lines in far as quality. I like the Super Paint line. It's in the middle. It's where your quality meets value. Okay. And when I was down in the States, I went to the Sherwin-Williams just walked in and said, hey, I'm a renovator. I'm flipping some houses. I need to get a paint account. Can I get a special price on interior and exterior super paint line? And they had me hooked up in 10 minutes. Took nothing. $38 a gallon for interior paint. Now that's money in the bank. Because I'll tell you right now, I don't care what they're putting on the wall under the bare label. I've never been happy with that paint. It had been 20 years since I've touched it. I did my market test. I would still buy Sherwin-Williams middle-of-the-road quality any day of the week. Sneak peek into that video, all right? Okay. Oh, my goodness. Now, um, ah, let's see. We covered everything I wanted to cover. Blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah, let's talk about things that you'd wish they'd bring back. Do you remember the good old days? Um, you can do it, we can help. They had like training seminars. They had like bleachers set up in the stores. Remember those days? And you could go there, you could learn how to install your own tile or do your own flooring. And like, I know they had the thing set up for the kids and they'd make little birdhouses and stuff and that's cute. They, you know, indoctrinate them into the orange. But I love the idea of training seminars and I think they need to get back to that. Really, really do. I, I love the tool corral. Do you remember that? They used to have it set up where it's like a big horseshoe and they'd have all the tools on display. They had batteries in the tools and there was an entrance and the cache was right there. And they'd have somebody working the cache at the tool corral and they have the sensor set up. Nothing left that department without being paid for. Now it's open on both sides, multiple aisles, and everything's behind a locked cage, right? Down in the States, it's even the next step. You guys, you guys have got everything behind lock and key. And the associate has to actually unlock it, take the product, and then walk with you up to the cashier to pay for it. Like, it's not a Fabergé egg, dude. It's a drill. Like, what's going on? <laughs> anyway... I was kind of irritated because the one time I needed to get a tool, I was stuck waiting 20 minutes for the guy with the key to come back from his break. And I'm like, that ain't service. That's the last time I'm going to be buying a tool from Home Depot because they sell exactly the same stuff on Amazon and I can get it the next day. And if I just organize my time a little better, I can place that prime delivery, boom, no sweat. I'm not losing half an hour of my actual business day while I'm trying to get work done because my time is revenue. You got to understand that, Home Depot. You can't make me stand there waiting for someone with a key to show it up. Like, I just want to grab it and go. That's what convenience is. The minute I'm sitting around, it's like going to a beauty parlor to buy a drill. Like, I don't have the process time in my head for that. Anyway, oh my goodness. Um, I remember the days where they used to have guys working in the stores. Now, this is my one of my favorite questions. So I want everybody to comment on this. Do you have people in your local stores that have trade experience? If you do, tell us what department and what store, okay? It's getting more and more rare. I have a flooring guy. I go to the middle of Ottawa, Gloucester, in case anybody wants to know. Curly hair, guy knows his stuff, okay? His knees gave out, he works there. I got an electrician in, which store was it? Ah, Hunt Club, okay? I got an electrician there. I got a plumber in Orleans. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, sometimes you just need more than an apron to tell you where to go. You need someone to explain how to connect the dots, right? What are the options? What are the, what, what's the solution to this problem that's sitting right on the shelf that you just don't know about and they can explain it to you? I loved having trade pros in those stores. Now listen, a trade pro that's retired is a wealth of knowledge. It's just like full of wisdom. There's nothing wrong with having that. Why in the world don't we? Instead, I got a flooring store in Canada that uh, hired a used car salesman to run the flooring department. Never installed flooring a day in his life. Well, what the hell good are you if you're a homeowner in there looking for help with your flooring? And he's just going to upsell you like a used car salesman until you're walking out of there with $20 a square foot flooring you didn't expect to buy. <laughs> anyway, oh, would really love to have some industry staff professionals. Lots of guys retired. Nobody, majority of people in our business didn't have a pension. So maybe if you offer them a decent wage, something with self-respect, you know, and they can wear a different kind of apron or something and identify themselves as an industry pro. Maybe, just maybe, that'd be the tipping point for one of you to put the last nail in the coffin and the other. I'm just throwing it out there. Now, listen, I'm going to jump into the chat. We're going to answer some questions. We're going to have some fun. I'm done ranting. Oh, one more thing. I was down in the States, and you all know we have the, uh, the, the, over, the covered overhang coming off the pro door, right? Down in the States, they had angled parking for the trucks right there. You can stick 10 commercial vehicles right there in the loading dock. You can roll over and throw your sheet goods in. You can buy a whole bunch of plywood and it's right there and convenient. We don't have that in Canada. And we have weather, baby. We have the overhead, but there's always just one jerk that rolls up, parks there, and then he goes shopping and he's gone for an hour taking phone calls in the pro department. So get your butt out of the way. If you're not going to have pro parking under the roof, 
then you shouldn't be letting people pull up who don't have a bloody cart to load their truck with. You gotta start enforcing that because the world is full of jerks. And I get really irritated when I can't pull up in the rain to bring my truck over and load my materials outside the rain. And it's just like, what am I gonna do, right? Go to fist with this guy because he's a jerk? No, I can't. But I can sure tell you, Home Depot and Lowe's, Make a bigger awning, include parking under it, or enforce the rule that you park in the damn lot and you come once you've got an order. It's not that big a deal. All right, I am done. Just wanted to say one more thing on this whole subject because we got a lot of other hardware stores in the, in the mix, right? You got Menards, you've got Ace down in the States, we've got a home hardware up here. Um, there's True Value Hardware. There's a whole bunch of independents. My experience with all these guys is these smaller stores, they're independently owned and they give great service and they train their staff and they have people around that know what the hell they're talking about. So if you're not happy with what you're getting at the local big box store, consider going to the local small box store. Because generally speaking, my experience, my favorite places to shop in all of the city of Ottawa, here it comes. Home hardware in Perkins, North Gore. And if I'm on the other side, Home Hardware Lannan in Winchester. Yeah, they all know what they're doing. And then Winchester, they even have a drive through building materials pickup so you can load up out of the rain. Now, you can't complain about that. All right, let's jump into some questions. I got Matt helping me tonight. He's going to be pulling out some questions. And listen, you know, we can't really just sit here all night long and, and just dump on them, okay? They are a convenience store, yes. They have their issues, yes, but we need them. We love them because they are convenient. And let's just face it, if you're like me, you will make at least two trips to a hardware store every single day that you're remodeling and renovating because you're always running into problems and need solutions. And it's nice to have them close by, right? At least they're that. Okay. Whew. Okay. Power to Mother Nature. I need a sip first. Mm. Ah, nothing like a little Sauve Blanc. All right. Happy birthday, Jeff. Fellow Leo, <laughs> is there a benefit to get a business license to sign up for Home Depot Pro or Lowe's Rona VIP Pro? If possible, what category would the DIYer fit into? This is part of the problem. We don't fit into any category. We're just schleps. We're suckers. We're homeowners, and everyone's trying to bleed you dry. In Ontario, in order to get a pro account, you have to have a business, registered business name. And I joke about this because it's so much different. In Florida, you have to go through licensing. You got to do exams. You've got to prove that you've got experience and you got to have financial capacity to run a business. And, and if you don't, you have to put up a bond, okay? Like they're serious about consumer protection down there. In Ontario, you can get out of jail. You can take 60 bucks. You can open up a company and you're a contractor by morning. So it's a little different world up here. Um, so depending where you live, that, that's the answer. It all depends where you live. If you're in Ontario, yes, you can get a contractor account at the Home Depot and you get like three to 5% off. You might get some discounts on your gas, blah, blah, blah. It's not huge, right? But if it's something, it's something. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get another question going up. Julian, hey, cheers, Julian. Saw your super chat earlier, buddy. Really do appreciate that. And I'm gonna take you up on that. I'm gonna go out and buy some nice whiskey. Maybe I'll take Matt with me and we'll go and celebrate together. Um, do you ever see yourself retiring and working at one of these box stores for fun? <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. That is a brilliant idea. Now, Home Depot and Lowe's, if you're paying attention, if you want to do a, a marketing campaign, what you should do is bring me into your store to answer questions for your, for your, for your patrons. Now, there's a marketing campaign. Oh my Lord. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna see that happen. My wife has been incredibly patient with my craziness over the last few years. Um, I've had a good career, right? Uh, we've done well, we've got a successful marriage. I got four great kids that are all grown up. Really my goal right now is make sure all four of them have a house. I want them all owning a home so that the pressure for their future is off my shoulders. And, uh, and then we will see what the future holds. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing this gig right here on YouTube for at least the next five, maybe 10 years. So I'm not going anywhere soon. I'm only 53, right? 
I know I'm bald and gray, but I'm not 73. I got lots of gas left in this tank. Cheers, my man. All right. <laughs> Maria wants to know, have you ever used Dutch boy paint? Is that okay paint? Wow, as in Dutch boy from Kitchener, Ontario? Hmm. No, I haven't used it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. There are so many different paint brands out there. Like, for me, quality is smooth. Okay? And so when you roll it on the wall, if it doesn't make a splattering mess and it goes on nice and smooth, then that's a decent paint. And then there's, there's additives that they put in paint for different performances. Like, um, you can wash the walls, right? Some paint you can't wash. Like most new houses, if you wash the doors and trim, you take the paint off because <laughs> they're using non-acrylic paint when they should be using acrylic paint. Shame on every home builder who doesn't. It only costs an extra two bucks, you cheapskates, and you have to paint your whole damn house all over again. The point is, is that a good quality paint is going to have some acrylic in it. A great quality paint has 100% acrylic. It's kind of an industry add additive standard for high quality, and it goes on nice and smooth, okay? And if you say in between coats, majority of paints on the market you're going to be happy with majority not all of them but the majority <laughs> all right cheers wow oh programmer x here we go thanks for the super chat some contacts for the new owners of lowe's rona in canada i can forward them your name you know what that'd be awesome uh, i wouldn't mind that why don't you throw us a quick comment um email me at uh, the company email at uh, it's I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this on the air. I don't want everybody bothering the company email because the, the young lady that works for us, I get overwhelmed. But uh, <laughs> if if you go into our uh, um, homepage on the YouTube, I'm sure we have our company link down there in the about section where you can send us an email. That'd be really, like, that'd be awesome. And um, wait a second, Matt, was, was, was that individual a, a member? Can I see? No. Okay, you could just put it in the forum. Tell you what, um, you could just email it to info at homerenovationdiy.com. Nobody else heard that, right? Okay. <laughs> Next question. Is it worth getting any of the exterior pre-hung doors from Home Depot? Yeah. Listen, I mean, it's, it's a builder door, right? It's not high quality, but it functions. So if you're doing a shed or if you're doing a replacement door in your house, the secret is to know that the, um, the frame is made of wood and you're going to have to add a wooden brick mold and you're going to have to use an exterior caulking and you're going to have to paint it on all sides and then seal the brick mold to your facade in order to keep it from rotting out. It can be a lot of work. Okay. But if you need a door in a hurry, it's a good fix. If you don't need it in a hurry, go to a custom door place, order one to your own specifications and then you can save all of that work because they will deliver it with the brick mold already attached to the jam. And it can be 100% vinyl with a steel door and you don't have all that headache. But yes, that one works. Ah. Brian wants to know what store has decent vinyl plank flooring. Hmm. Neither. I'm sorry. I've just not been impressed. I, I used to think that maybe life proof was okay. Um, I've been diving into some of the warranty issues with these products. I've been diving into their durability, their compression, their translation of dirt underneath coming through the surface. Um, Max, my cameraman from, from, from most of the years of this channel did life proof in the whole main floor of his house. And after a few weeks, I came in one day and I was like, Hey, what's with a big bump in the middle of the floor. And the, apparently there's a, a, a screw head sticking out of a subfloor and it translated right through the floor and it made a huge bump. I was like, well, that's really disappointing. It's too bad that the core of that floor wasn't more rigid, right? And that that wouldn't happen, but it did. And so it was like, okay, well, you know, if you're installing flooring, you, you don't want to have to have the place perfect before you put the floor down. You want to have the floor to have a little bit of ability to deal with some stress, right? Like anyway, um, there's a lot of great flooring out in the market, okay? Flooring at the box stores, it's a convenience store. The lowest possible quality for the highest possible price. Ingrain that. Go to a flooring store, and you will find thousands of options that are 100 times better.
for like an extra buck or two a square foot. It's worth the investment. All right. Anyway, my goodness. Let's move on. Which stores do you suggest for appliances in Ottawa? I need to buy a side-by-side -side washer dryer. Well, that all depends on what kind of brands you like. Um, I would actually go take a look at uh, Leon's and The Brick before I go to box stores. My experience is they carry a higher quality line, okay? And if you, you really want to go uh, the next level, there's lots of designer appliance stores you can go um, take a look at. But I think Leon's and Brick are a great start. I think uh, you want to hear something funny. There's Thor Kitchens is a kitchen company. They actually, I don't know, Thor, Thorman is kind of funny, but they're actually at the brick now. And they're, they've they been growing. They're, I keep an eye on them. There's also Medea. Okay, it's a huge Chinese appliance company that seem to be making a quality product. And they're really practical, right? They're not trying to impress you with bells and whistles. They're just delivering a decent product. It's kind of nice to see. So, uh, you know, cheers to a Chinese company manufacturing all over the world. They're taking over the large, I think they're the largest appliance company in the world now. But they're worth taking a look at. Because we all know that North American appliance brands have been cost cutting and product cutting and quality cutting and inspection cutting for years now. So almost any washer dryer you think you want to buy, yeah, it might work for a week or two. But the, the warranty department is coming out. You, you can almost guarantee the warranty department is coming out. It's getting a little frustrating. You know, like you can go buy a house from 1940 and if it still has the original appliances, they're still working. <laughs> what the hell are we doing? We're so smart. We're talking about colonizing Mars. We can't even make a washer dryer that work. Come on now. Uh, Jeff, have you tried the liquid sandpaper from Home Depot? I'm wanting to repaint my cabinets. They're stained. No, I have not tried liquid sandpaper. That's interesting. I'm imagining it's some sort of a uh, degloss product, right? That you can just put on your oil and it would prep it. Regardless, even if you use it, my suggestion is going to be to prime the cabinet with the, like a, a flat oil anyway, okay? Because it transitions between the sciences. So the latex that you're putting on is going to bond to the oil or the wood or the combination thereof with great success. And so you don't want to take chances when an experiment because that's a real labor intensive project. And if you want it to work the first time, you know, don't try to find ways to cut down on the labor. F make sure you use a product that guarantees your labor isn't in vain. All right. Okay. Ooh. Jeff, does the same opinion apply to Mohawk flooring from Costco? That's a really great question. Jason, my, my, my first instinct there is no, because I have actually found that over the years that Costco has done a really fantastic job of bringing in a, a quality product on their shelf. They don't bring in the cheap stuff. They might negotiate good pricing for you and they do that wholesale business volume and get you a good price, but they don't seem to be willing to cut the corners on the quality the same. Every product I've ever worked on for the last 20 years from Costco, whether I bought it or the homeowner bought it or whatever else, it's always been a quality piece, like especially with their vanities quality pieces of furniture. Never disappointed. And I don't expect that to change. And if it ever does, I'll make sure to let you guys know if Costco decides to get cheap and play dirty like everybody else. But at this point, I've always been impressed with their product line. So Mohawk makes cheap stuff for the box stores. They make good stuff probably for Costco and they make great stuff for flooring stores. I haven't had the time to buy all of the Mohawk flooring products that are on the market, all the different stores and compare them. But that's my general feel. All right, so cheers. Sunny G, Sycamore, recently acquired Lowe's Rona in Canada. Yeah. How do you think this will affect pricing and selection? It's historically been disappointed by Lowe's, Rona, product self-selection and price as compared to Home Depot. Yeah, that's tough. Like Canada is a really lousy market for competition, right? We don't have a lot of people and, and the only place we have a lot of people it's all stuffed in Ontario. And then outside of that, to be a chain, you got to think as a chain, you got to make your distribution arrangements and deals. And it's just expensive to run business up here, right? So you're going to find that no matter what goes on, what's available in the store is always a limited supply. Usually these companies have got a much better selection online. Having said that, let me just jump in. One more quick comparison between Home Depot and Lowe's that I reminded myself of when I said that. Home Depot carries uh, siding, vinyl siding, right? But 
in my experience and all the research that I've done the last week ready for this video, their siding is very, very, very thin. It's a very, very thin vinyl. It looks like vinyl. And if you only ever go to Home Depot, you'd expect, well, that's what vinyl siding is. But vinyl siding, if you go to the manufacturer's websites, you'll see that they all have multiple different quality and brand lines and thicknesses and durability and wind ratings and all that other stuff. At least at Lowe's website, you can get the cheap stuff or they've got a, a, a almost the highest quality siding that that manufacturer provides. I think it's Mitten up here in Canada. And you know, Mitten's a decent brand. If you buy the decent quality, that's like all of these things, appliances, paints, vinyls, all of these companies make seven different quality lines, and then they distribute the different quality lines to the different kinds of stores that want to sell their product. Okay? You understand the, the system here? Home Depot and Lowe's are the convenience store in that group. They're not selling the most quality, but at least in this case, Lowe's had access to a decent product. So when I want a quality product, I go to Home Hardware and I talk to my guys over at Perkins and I'm like, hey, I need quality. And they direct me into the quality lines and then I buy from them because I don't even have that option on the Home Depot website. Just saying, it's something to look at. Like they all have distribution agreements. They all have pricing arrangements and, and they'll negotiate and say, oh, I want your, your second from the bottom product and I want an exclusive deal and we'll do this much volume. And so the companies will ship it out. And then someone also come in and said, hey, I'm looking for, a, oh, Home Depot locked that one up already. Well, how about I, I'll beat them on quality, but then I'm going to be more expensive. And so then you all think the Home Depot is the best deal in town. They're just selling the, the, the lower quality lines that they can buy from these companies and getting exclusive distribution agreements for it. And this is what's happening. Anyway, uh, Molly K over. Any recommendations for stores besides Lowe's and Home Depot for HVAC ducks? Yes. <laughs> um, the challenge here is, is that some of these stores that are set up for HVAC distribution and to contractors, you actually have to have a gas license to shop there. That's disappointing. But like if you're in Ottawa, you can go to a Boone plumbing slash heating store and you can always Google plumbing slash heating stores because they generally go together. All right. These two mechanicals, they, they, they warehouse a lot together and sell together. And these people have the every solution, every fitting, every duct, every different gauge of the metal as well, right? And so they're a great solution. Um, if you don't, if you can't find what you're looking for at your convenience store, it's because you probably have to go to a specialty store. And it's just a Google search away. Plumbing HVAC wholesaler, right? Make a phone call. You sell to the public. That's all you got to do. That's the research. Only takes a second. <laughs> Right? It's like calling up the pizza store. Hey, do you guys deliver? Yes. Good. Are you open? Yes. Okay. We're in business. Well, one Google search, look for the wholesaler, call and ask if they sell to the public. If they do, you're in business and you'll get a decent price and you've got a great product. All right. Uh, I think the cedar planks stink at home, home Depot. Should I go to a lumber yard? Well, one of the things that we have a problem with, with lumber, at these stores is that they, they, they bring it inside the store. And depending on how fast it's selling, it can over -climatize. And by that, I mean, it's a concrete structure with a lot of air blown around and it's really dry. If you've ever been in that store for an hour or two doing business, you're gonna find your lips start to crack, you, you need a drink, you're like dying, right? I don't know how employees, all the employees have water bottles on them. It's because it's super dry. So what happens to the, all of the wood that's inside those controlled climates is they over dry and they get cracked and they warp and they get, they get brittle. And that's why your experience is such. I like to buy from lumber yards that have a lot of these materials in a covered but outside environment. Because I find that the, 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 the swing between high humidity and low humidity is like daily, weekly, monthly, but at least it's more mitigated and it's more normal. So when I buy my material, it's not all dried out. So when I drive a screw in it, it doesn't just split on me. And that's just my experience. Okay. What are the best power tool brands at each store? <laughs> that's another great difference, right? So you got Home Depot and they got it locked down. They're doing DeWalt and they're doing, um, they've got Rigid, which I think is their own brand. I can't confirm or deny that. Um, they've also got Milwaukee. They carry a little bit of Bosch and a little bit of Makita 
and they've got a little bit of uh, Metabo in there now, which is the old Hitachi brand. And then when you go over to Lowe's, there's no Milwaukee. They do have DeWalt. They've got their own Cobalt, and they've got the um, new Craftsman line, okay, which is for homeowners. And those are the red and black tools that I tried out on that basement renovation that I did, uh, wow, six months ago, I guess those series came out. And so I was trying all those products out, and they were a decent tool. So, you know, if you're looking for a homeowner tool and you want to get the price down, DeWalt or Craftsman are both Stanley Black & Decker Corporation. Um, the DeWalt is the, uh, the professional brand and the Craftsman is a homeowner brand. And you're going to find they both perform just fine. Uh, it is not the best tool in the market, but it's best bang for your buck, especially as a homeowner. Okay. If you want the best tools, um, they don't, the box stores don't even carry them. Like, why would a box store, a convenience store, carry the best tools in town? Right? Like, you got to buy Fest tool. You got you to go to German engineering and construction if you want the best tools. But Milwaukee, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's getting up there. And they're getting better every year. But I'm just saying, for the best stuff in the market, I mean, Hilti makes great tools. You can't find those in the box stores either. So just remember, um, when you're at the 7-Eleven to buy your tools, you're at a 7-Eleven. All right? <laughs> anyway, let's go now. Love wasting two hours in a five football field box store for a box of screws or some glue. Oh, burns you. you. Ask an apron. If you can find one, they have an attitude. Yeah, that can happen. Listen, um, aprons, vests, whatever, they're all people, right? They all got jobs. And a lot of these people are under a lot of stress to perform. They got things to get done. And um, you can imagine, to a certain degree, it gets a little frustrating for someone said, hey, where's the screws? Because it's like, I've answered that question 8,000 times this week. Can someone put up a sign, screws this way? Like, you know, it could be a little frustrating, I'm sure. Try to be easy on people. Like, the whole world is short on staff right now. So let's not gang up and beat up on the employees who are trying to help because we're in short supply of people who are generally out there trying to help. Uh, it'd be nice. Treat, treat the staff with respect and kindness. Their job didn't get any easier when everybody decided to stop going to work. All right? That's just the bottom line. If you want to pick on anybody... Uh, there's over a million people, million men of, you know, able body, working age who don't have a job right now because they just refuse to work. You want to beat somebody up, you can go and get online and give them crap because they're part of the problem, not the solution. All right, Zach, refinishing an older 900 square foot deck. Can't seem to find a stain with really good reviews. Power wash and replace all rotten pieces. Any deck stain suggestions? Yeah, Zach, um, I love C2 guard but the secret what you're looking for i'm not sure where you live and what your access to the product is going to be is you want to get a penetrating sealer stain with uv protection additive okay those are the things so you're going to find that that's really not available at the box stores because they sell convenience and they like to sell it more than once so they sell you something that skins on the wood that ends up blistering and peeling you got to sand and grind off and then do it again um, sealing stain, sealer stains like a C2 guard, they soak into the wood. And if they start to fade, you just put on another coat. You don't have to remove the old stuff. And that is awesome, right? So that's what I recommend. Uh, it could be water-based or oil-based, but it has to be a penetrating sealer stain. Okay. All right. Flex wants to know, just use the apps. Home Depot app will tell you the aisle and the bin. <laughs> there you go. Right. That's phenomenal. I have never even used the Home Depot app before. Let me tell you something. I grew up in uh, in my neighborhood here. I've been a Home Depot person all my life. Again, then Lowe's finally came to town. Like I used to be Beaver Lumber back in the 80s. But then Home, Home Depot bought everybody out. So then you get to a point where it's like, I know every store. I know every aisle. I know every bin. I know exactly what I'm going to find when I turn the corner. I just never really spent enough time in Lowe's to get to know them that way because time is money. And once you've learned a buying behavior, you don't want to have to relearn all over again because every box is different. They have different company products. So you look at the screws and it's the same screw, but they're different labels. So your brain doesn't know how to identify it, right? And so this is what's going on. This is why I'm kind of a Home Depot guy. 
Uh, I generally haven't come out about it, but I, I love going to Home Depot because I know their products, I know their brands, I know what they're carrying, and the odd time they make a major switch, it's easy for me to adjust. Now, I do love going to Lowe's because they carry different products, and generally speaking, I think they're more creative with the home home homeowner. They're more homeowner focused, and so you find really cool, interesting things there that you wouldn't otherwise. Like, remember that deck project I built that privacy wall, and we used the Hoft posts to make that horizontal fence? I found that at Lowe's. Interesting enough, this year, Home Depot is also selling the Hoft product because the one that they were selling sucked. Anyway, let's get on to the next question. You know, if you guys are interested and you want to keep going and answer more questions, I can, I'm willing to hang around a little while longer, okay? So that's cool. Don't feel like this is going to wrap up when we got to go. Oh, I didn't get my question. So stick with us. Let's get into some more of this. Julian wants to know what's the best nail gun for the homeowner. Uh, one that works. <sighs> it's tough. Um, when we're dealing with, with, with the quality of a tool, Julian, two things to consider. One, the battery is half the price of the, of the tool. So if you have tools that you're currently buying, then I would consider encouraging you to buy the nail gun of that tool brand. And if you haven't bought into a brand yet, then consider um, only buy from a brand that is at least a Craftsman or DeWalt level and up. Don't go below. Okay. Um, yeah. I've never bought a DeWalt tool that I was disappointed in. And I haven't been disappointed with any of the Craftsman tools that I've tried. Okay. And I don't expect that, that experience to change if I, if I go up the price scale at all. All right. But they're all unique and they're all different. But the biggest expense is the batteries. So if you stay brand loyal, you'll save yourself a lot of time and money in aggravation. All right. Hopefully that helps, buddy. Cheers. Bob wants to know, he's found that Lowe's has a much better selection of trims. Yeah. Right. I told you the mill department there. Mill work department is really amazing there. That's a good point, Bob. I don't know. Guys, is, is it the same down in the States? Because up here in Canada, the mill work department is rocks. They've got really great creative you know, like do-it-yourself project trims, more profiles, and it just seems to be a, a better deal. Anyway, oh, next question. <laughs> How do you feel about Ryobi? Tony, that's a loaded question. You already know the answer. <laughs> um, I just can't get into anything that looks like a six-year-old supposed to use it. I don't know what it is about that lime green color, but it doesn't exactly scream pro to me, right? It looks like a traffic cone. I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I don't even want to try it. It's probably just fine. You know, Mr. Build It on YouTube, he's, he seems to be sponsored by Ryobi. He's got every damn tool that they got under the sun. And he seems to be able to work with it just fine. So maybe it's okay. But when I was growing up and I had my first experience with Ryobi, and largely, this is what happens, right? Your first experience is your experience, you know? Like, if, if you go on a date and you can't stand the person you're on the date with, you don't take them on a second date. You don't call them up 10 years later and say, hey, uh, you want to go? I, you know, you, no, done. One and done, right? So I had a bad experience with Ryobi. I th they felt like Tonka toys. I, I don't, just was not down with that. So I just left them alone, never looked back. I don't think there's any amount of money that they could ever pay me to get them on Team Green. Um, not to say it's not a perfectly good tool now, but back in the day when I was working with them one time, I was just like, there's just no way. And I threw it out and went and got a real tool. Anyway, <laughs> you know, that's what you get here. You get the truth. That's my experience. I'm going to share it with you. Good, bad, and ugly. Uh, Tony wants to know, use black duct tape on the green. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we can paint the tools, right? Oh my goodness. Who was that? Have you all seen that? There's a there's a guy named Tim. He was he has a YouTube channel. He's called the Construction Coach. And he makes videos and batches and uploads them, but he painted all of his tools gray so that he didn't promote any of the brands until they were ready to pay for him his endorsement or something, right? I thought that was awesome. I'm like, "Wow. Okay. That seems like an awful lot of work." Um, anyway, <laughs> no worries. Knowledge on tap. Happy birthday, Jeff. In your current opinion, 
when to go specialty store or other, and when to save some money at Lowe's and Home Depot. Example, lighting, wood, drywall, insulation, paint. Okay, so here's the deal. Let me, let's break this down. It's a great question, by the way. Thank you for that. All of these building centers are carrying a, uh, uh, a group of commodities, okay? Insulation, lumber, drywall, all this plumbing, electrical. These are all commodities. No one's got the market cornered on this stuff. So whenever you're dealing with commodities, they're amazing for that. Where things change is when they get into the fixtures and the finishes and the flooring, okay? So if you're going to go buy lighting, consider going to a lighting store. If you're going to buy flooring, go to a flooring store. If you're going to buy windows and doors, go to a window and door store. If you're going to buy a kitchen, cabinets, go to a design center and actually go buy kitchen cabinetry. If you want a cheap kitchen, maybe go to Ikea and then design it simple so you don't have to buy all the bells and whistles that go with it to make it expensive. But whatever you do, avoid buying whatever's being sold on the shelf in the kitchen department there, either store. I'm just not happy with any of it. The hardware is bad, the connection, plastic brackets, all of these things. There's just It's just one bad thing after another that happens on those job sites. The hardware store, the box stores, they seem to be really good at supplying um, emergency solutions, okay? Or I have a rental property solution. But if you're a homeowner, don't treat yourself like a renter in your own home. Go buy quality. Because when you install quality in your house, you're increasing the, the, the return on investment. The, you're increasing the value of your property. Every hour you put in for free is, is, is worth three hours of hiring. Because you don't, you you're making that 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 profit tax free, right? Like you understand. So if if you're going to do a little project, and let's say you're going to put in flooring, and you can get flooring for four bucks a square foot, why not spend five and get really good quality flooring? Because you're doing the labor yourself, and that is seventy percent of the job. Take whatever you're going to save by being a DIYer and reward yourself with a better quality product. Nothing wrong with doing that. And in, in the same regard, when you're going to go buy a fridge, if it's for your house, you're going to have to live there and deal with that fridge. So spend a little bit of money and get a good one. Or, or keep it so simple that it can't disappoint you. Like one of the things I like to do with refrigerators is don't get the ice and the water features. Oh, it's just so much less to break down. Anyway, let's stop ranting. Let's get back to questions. Sorry about that. <laughs> Here we go. Question, would you recommend tile from the box stores and which one do you feel is better? Yeah, um, wow, okay, so oh, there have been some changes in the tile departments at the stores. We have a bunch of different qualities. We've got a, a, a cheap ceramic that's um, imported from different countries all over the world. We've got Turkey, we've got Indonesia, we've got Brazil, we got Italy. Um, to name a few. And if it's a ceramic, it means that largely the shape of each of those stones is bigger or smaller in the box. Very difficult to install. If you go to a porcelain, you get that size more consistent. So it's worth the money. Most of what's in the box store is ceramic or maybe porcelain. They've come around. Now they're using rectified porcelain, which is uh, the next level of engineering in, in stone. So there's less expansion and contraction. So at least you don't get the cracking that you used to. So now the installation's easier. You don't get the cracking. You don't have the expansion. You don't need as big a grout line. Okay. So you can make a sexier project. Um, and then you got natural stones. Box stores love to sell travertine for whatever reason, but it is really tricky to work with. Okay. So I like to recommend as a homeowner, go with rectified porcelain. That way you get that modern look with the thin grout line. You can use your tile leveling clip systems. All the stones are exactly the same size. You're not gonna be disappointed. But just because it's cheap per square foot doesn't make it a great choice. Because the, the difference between the purchase and the installation can be night and day. I used to refuse to install box store ceramic tile in my client's homes if they bought it. I'd be like, nope, here's my tile store. Go there, get quality. They don't carry junk. You can't, you can't install junk because it takes 10 times longer to install the junk and that's 70% of the cost of the project. So if you're gonna buy junk and make me install it, I was like, you know, 
what? You know, my, I, I might as well put a fountain in your living room for the amount of money that you're blowing here. Like, this is ridiculous. So just go buy good stuff because it only costs an extra couple of bucks a square foot to get really quality material, right? And it's also so much stronger and less likely to crack down the road. So, yeah. Um, I don't shop at box stores for tile, generally speaking. Although if you're down in the States, I've been to Floor and Decor, and they actually, that's worth the look. They have enough selection and choice and options and quality there that it's worth the look. I'll say that. Like they specialize in flooring. So instead of having one aisle with floor tile and wall tile, they have like, you know, I don't know, what is it? 80,000 square feet store <laughs> dedicated to flooring. And that's how many options are out there. Like if you've ever been to a trade show for flooring international in importers and stuff, there's there's hundreds and hundreds of flooring manufacturers from all over the world there. And they've got hundreds and hundreds of tile on display. And they've got even more that are in their catalog. And, and all of these stores are trying to figure out, well, what should we present to our public as their buying options when there's millions? So, and when it comes to tile, shop around, okay? Um, you, you are not going to be disappointed shopping around because they're that much of a selection. Okay, so it's not like everybody sells the same six or eight, right? It's not drywall screws. When it comes to tile and flooring, it is a huge market. You do yourself a favor if you have at least three or four different stores you shop at because they'll all carry a different product line. Anyway, wow, that was a long answer. My goodness. Michael wants to know, how do you rate the quality of box store vinyl fencing versus other supply merchants? You know... Um, I don't really have a hard, fast rule here. I have never bought vinyl fencing from the box store, but I would have a sneaky suspicion that in my opinion, they are going to sell you the lowest quality, the thinnest vinyl for the most dollar that they can find. That's kind of the mode of operation, right? That's what they do with vinyl siding, right? They'll sell the, 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 the 28 millimeter stuff instead of the 44. Now, when you go 0.28 and 0.44, it doesn't sound like much, but... 28 and 44 are two significantly different numbers, okay? <laughs> That's the difference between a happy meal and going out for a steak dinner. So, like, when you think of vinyl siding that way, think about that. Like, wow, why are they putting the cheapest crap on the shelf instead of a decent quality stuff on the shelf? If, if they're only presenting me with one option, wouldn't it be nice if it was a nice option? But they make the biggest margin on the the lowest quality product that they can sell you at the highest possible price. And so that's their method of operation. That's why their margins are so huge. That's why they made billions in profits last year. So be smart about it. You know, like it's great to have a Home Depot nearby. It's great to shop there. It's great to have Lowe's and shop there. But whenever you're getting to the fixtures, the finishes and the, and the flooring, you know, consider that there are other options on the marketplace that carry a quality product. And sometimes quality does count. Right? Like drywall is drywall. But vinyl siding is not vinyl siding. Okay? That's like saying a car is a car. Well, there's a bit of a difference between a Lada and a Lamborghini. So, <laughs> you know, all these product selections that you have, you have those kind of choices available as well. So, consider that. All right. Next question. Joe wants to know IKEA kitchen versus Home Depot Lowe's. You see, now that's the thing. Here you go, Joe. What you're looking at is you're looking at the ready to assemble, the RTA, okay, of, of IKEA versus a um, prefabricated cabinet that you can go into the kitchen store and give your do your layout, give them your measurements, and they'll design. And the kitchen manufacturer will build the boxes and ship it to your house already assembled. That's the biggest issue. If you're willing to put in the time and energy to build all your own boxes and build your own kitchen, IKEA is affordable and it's a decent quality kitchen. It all, it's all about the, the, the time benefit, okay? Um, I've done both. I've done all three. I've done every kind of kitchen you can imagine. I'm going to say that um, I value my time a little bit too much to be considering IKEA as a regular option. I would always want to hire a company to deliver me cabinets to a job site. That would be my primary goal because ready to assemble is always more work, more risk, because it's like, you know, the more you handle something, the more likely you are to wreck it. 
<laughs> if it comes shipped and, and, and it's boxed and you have a storage facility, you can inspect, make sure it's the right color and the right size. Leave it there until it's time to install. That's the safest bet. Uh, whenever you're crawling around on the floor building boxes on cardboard, all it takes is one screw and then, you know, your, your day is wrecked. So Julian wants to know undermount versus drop-in sink. Trying to convince my wife to do a drop-in because I found more inventory styles for it in Home Depot, Amazon, Lowe's. I, uh, that all depends on your countertops too, right? Not all countertops are made equal. So if you got laminate countertops, then you got to go drop in. There are some really nice, sexy drop-in sinks on the market though. I'll be honest with you. So um, if you're having a hard time deciding, uh, just really the, the only question you got to ask yourself is, is this a hill you want to die on? Right? <laughs> because there are lots of places you can go to get sinks. Uh, go check out your local Ferguson's or, or Wolseley if you want to get a sink. See what they got, right? Go to, go to a local kitchen um, kitchen store. And they'll, they'll, usually most kitchen or countertop stores are, are in cahoots with a, a, a sink company, and they've got displays there. And they can show you options for, for kitchen sinks that you haven't even seen before. Um, I am a big fan of an undermount sink. Uh, consider going to Stylish. Check out stylish.ca. I've used their product. They're great. They're the ones that have the little cutting boards that slide back and forth and all that kind of jazz integrated into the sink. Um, there's lots of options on the market. Don't, don't pigeonhole yourself based on what's available at box stores. All right. Let's go. Let's do another one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, here we are. It's 611. How are we doing for questions here, guys? Do we have any more? There we go, Sandy Hill. Did my kitchen tile for the first time in my life. Thank, aw, Sandy, good for you. Doesn't it feel good though? And I bet you did a hell of a job too, right? Because it's your house and you give a damn. So good on you. That's the power of DIY, man. Why hire and be disappointed? You know, we just filmed a video today. We're talking about the, the, how to find a contractor in today's economy. <laughs> you know what? The easiest way to find a contractor today is to go buy yourself a mirror. You know, open your eyes. Because, man, the options are pretty bleak out there. If you're not in the top 20% of income earners, it is really hard to get the attention of a contractor or even interested in talking to you about your project. Oh, my goodness. Teresa wants to know, what quality are the patio doors at Lowe's? Home Depot, et cetera, not installing myself. Does Home Depot or Lowe's install anymore? Yeah, they both have installation services. But can I just suggest that um, uh, there are other options out there that are, that are going to be a higher quality? Okay. Always thinking this. They're a corner store. And if I'm and if I'm in desperate need to get a patio door and I have to have it tomorrow, I can go there and get one. But if I'm planning ahead, I can get a really good quality patio door with better hardware, better air seal, better glass, better 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 movement, okay? Yeah. There's so many different things about a door that makes it good or bad. It's worth doing a little bit of research. Talk to a different company. Talk to them. Even go into the Home Depot or the Lowe's and talk to the door and window guy and say, hey, listen, I want to order a patio door. What are my options? And they'll be like, well, we've got these different manufacturers and these different quality supply lines available. Okay, what kind of features and benefits are you looking for? And they can help you line up. And then if, the, if, the, if it's out of your budget, then you can consider going down a quality line. But I would start with what's the best door that I'm going to be the happiest with for the next 20 years because that's how long a door should last without even thinking about it. A product like that should last longer than your mortgage. So don't buy something that's going to be disappointing. Don't buy builder grade. Builder grade is not designed to last as long as the mortgage. It's designed to last long enough to get past warranty, right? Like we're talking just a few years. So... If you're putting something in your own house, buy, buy quality. And then why in the heck would you pay someone to install it? Doors are so easy, you know? You, you, you set them on the ground, they stand there, you put throw a few screws in, spray foam it, done. Heck, we've got videos and stuff like that. You can do that one yourself. All right, Nick, home renovation DIY. I'm in the process of remodeling my bathroom. Yeah, and found floor and decor to have a great selection, right? Should I stay away from ceramic tile from floor and decor? Okay, so listen, ceramic tile has challenges, but it has benefits. It's so cheap. So 
If you want to go with a, a lower cost product, okay, then your floor assembly is really the system here. Because if you put a, a ceramic tile on top of a floor that doesn't have enough strength to support it, there's too much deflection, it'll crack all over the place, okay? So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have at least one and a quarter inches of subfloor if you're wood floor construction. You want 16 inch on center floor joists. You want them two by 10 dimensional lumber as a minimum. Okay, you want to have that as flat as possible. If you got to pull the subfloor to plane the top of a joist down or something, do it. Get it as flat as possible. Okay, and then going with ceramic is still a good option. Or you can go with 5 8 subfloor and then Ditra mat. And that'll even give you better protection, okay? Because it has an uncoupling membrane. Because remember, ceramic expands and contracts a lot. So having an uncoupling membrane underneath it so things can expand and contract at different rates is key to success with, with ceramic, all right? And so that's my recommendation. If you want to save money on your tile, you got to buy an uncoupling mat. Well, you're going to spend money somewhere. You might as well spend it on a good tile that doesn't crack or chip. Go to porcelain. Just saying. Now, if you're on concrete, slab on grade, down in the south somewhere, then, you know, the hell with it. The concrete's the strength, right? Just roll on a crack isolation membrane that's, that's, that's pennies of glass. And then you don't have to worry about you going to those next steps. All right, cheers. Ruben, I think the fact that Home Depot supports veterans, they automatically get more clients. Well, there's a hell of a lot of veterans, aren't there? You know, down in the States, that's for sure. Up here, we don't have as many per capita, that's for sure. But... Uh, yeah, you know, having a veteran program probably isn't a bad idea. You know, if if, uh, if Lowe's are smart, they'd maybe take a look at doing the same. I don't know if they do. Huh, interesting. The sauce mind your business. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things to do is actually read your names. <laughs> What's a good place to buy budget solid wood cabinets for the kitchen in the U.S.? Thank you for all your videos over the years. Give me the curtains to DIY your house. The best place to buy a budget kitchen cabinet. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to go Google search um, cabinet manufacturers. Okay, there are, let's call it for the sake of argument, there's three major brands that own 10 to 20 brands in each of those companies. Yeah, you heard me. It's a monopoly. Now, you can get on their websites, okay, and then you can scroll through and you can go look for DIY cabinets, DIY cabinets, boom. You'll find a DIY cabinet version of this company, and in that DIY cabinet version, they're going to say, hey, you're going to have two colors, there's only one door style, and we have pre-built boxes in only the following dimensions. That's your best price. Now, you can contact that company, say, who's my local distributor, and then you can work backwards that way to find someone that can hook you up with that order but that's what you're looking for you're looking for limited color limited door options limited box options so they're not custom ordering it they're just manufacturing the boxes and filling a supply warehouse somewhere and then you get a completed box ready to go that you can install and that's a great affordable way to do a kitchen all you gotta do is just design your kitchen to be open-ended so that if you're in a c-shape that's difficult sometimes but if it's an l-shape or a galley pff, you're gonna be rocking all right and that's how you can get a quality cabinet for a great price by buying the design line that has limited selection options that they don't have to make custom order for you, that they can just produce to keep the inventory on the shelf. It's a great option and you'll save yourself a ton of money. All right. Cheers. Woo-wee. Carl went to the Lowe's free install for stained master carpeting and canceled the deal. Hmm. Overpriced for the carpet quality. They claimed free install and then quoted me 800 labor to install $800 carpet. <laughs> well, you know, there may be reasons for that, but I, I can't really comment. Um, well, you're going to find that the installation, uh, the representation of installation of the store is going to be uh, square foot or so much free or whatever, right? But there's always a there's always hidden information in there. Like they'll say, it's so much a square foot to install flooring. And then they'll summon out to the house and go, well, this is odd. That's strange. We've got to fix this. you got to transition there where you need a nosing there. And Now, here's the actual final price. And they're going to stick it to you every single time. So, big surprise, right? Big, big surprise. The um, 
The suggested prices that they advertise with are for basic installation, which means uh, it never going to happen. So there's always going to be additionals. So be prepared for that. And uh, if you don't want to be a DIYer, you can be a do-it-yourself payer instead of a do-it-yourselfer. I mean, holy cow. Let's see what we got here. Ozzy, how would you rate Menards versus Lowe's? Home Depot Lumber Department. You know, here's the thing. I have yet to be in a Menards. I've only been in Florida. I don't have a Menards near me. I am making plans next time I go down to the States to drive myself to a Menards so I can take a look at that store because I'd love to have a more well-rounded opinion about it. Um, I don't know, guys, anybody out there else? You know, you, Do you use Menards? Is there anything that sticks out and says Menards is great because, right? Hit the comment section up and let us all know. All right, that would be great. Um, you all have a much better understanding of the market than I do, okay? Because collectively, all of your opinions can create a really good answer to the question. Oh, here we go. Anybody have opinions on ready-to-assemble cabinets? Yeah, I got one. Um, they're a huge waste of time. <laughs> And you, in a lot of cases, you'll end up doing them wrong. And then you'll damage the cabinet, uninstalling and reinstalling. Uh, you really got to read instructions. If you're going to do RTA, you've got to read instructions, okay? Like RTA is because it's simple shipping, right? It takes up less space in the truck, so it's, it's cheaper to ship. But that's the only benefit that you get. It's a lower price. <laughs> and so just consider that. That's, that's really what that is all about. It's about, if there's a market for a lower cost, RTA is a solution to a lower price. It's not the solution to a better cabinet. All right. Oh, let's see what else we can do here. We're going to do a few more questions here. We're going to finish up in just a few minutes here, guys, okay? I am starving, and I got to cook myself another steak. I'm on a weight loss journey. I'm down 23 pounds over the last three months, and I'm feeling great. Hopefully, you'll be able to tell the difference in the next video series. I'm not breathing so damn hard. Um... Joe says a local utility company keeps advertising a coverage plan to protect against underground water pipe failure, pipe from street to house, good idea or a scam. House is 65 years old in the Northeast. Well, if your house is 65 years old in the, in the Northeast, you might have a need for um, better pipes. But double check with um, whose responsibility it is from where to where. Usually the city takes responsibility from the main up until a certain distance from the house because that's what they want. They want to maintain control over the first six feet, give or take, off the sidewalk. Um, if the pipes in the Northeast are, are as low as I think they are, then they're probably six feet below ground. So you're not never going to be dealing with a frost issue. And in my all of my years of experience, the only pipes I've ever had issues with in old houses is the weeping tile because it's not a pipe. Those old houses are actually clay, you know, like shaped, stacked together, kind of like a Spanish roof. Okay. And so, but for the most part, if you don't have trees, you don't have roots, you don't have problems. So you can, uh, you can, you can make your own decision on that. But um, my experience, if you can avoid an insurance product, you're probably better off not having it because all you're going to do is you give them your money to pay for someone else's problem. <laughs> There's enough problems in life already. If we don't have to get insurance, you're probably better off not having it. Want to lay LVP over existing tile, Christian, do you? Some rooms have no flooring at all. You're on slab. How do I raise the flooring so that the LVP is level with the LVP that will be over the tile? Well, you know, that's actually um, not that tricky. You can install a quarter-inch cement board in thin set on your slab to create a new height in those other rooms. You can get quarter or you can get half inch, depending on the thickness of your tile, okay? So that's a solution, or you can rip out the tile. You wanna rip it out, you gotta grind it down, maybe a little floor leveler to repair some of the damage. But if you're just looking for a quick, simple fix in one or two rooms so you can have that seamless look, then go go and get yourself some three by five foot quarter inch cement panel or half inch if that's necessary. Lay it in thin set, okay? And then you can go LVP right over top of that. All right. Cheers, buddy. Uh, da, 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 da. Roman, 
reckless. Menards is good. They have more selection and give a 13% rebate on everything and have a huge outdoor lumberyard. I love a good outdoor lumberyard. I'm telling you, that's uh, that's not bad. Thanks for your opinion there, dude. Appreciate it. <laughs> is Angie's List a great place to find a tile layer? If not, any suggestion? I can't endorse them. Um, talked to the folks at Angie's List at the last trade show in Vegas. Went back to Florida, called Angie's List, tried to get some contractors out. Um, it's few and far between. At the end of the day, everybody's suffering from shortage of labor, right? If you're looking for a tile setter, okay, and no one's advertising their surfaces, it's because they're super busy. But if you're looking for a tile setter, here's the solution. You go find an Italian neighborhood, somewhere where they got their, their little Italian shop where they make sandwiches for lunch, okay? And then you, you go there for lunch once or twice a week for a couple of weeks and get to know the little old lady working behind the counter, okay? She's got about five relatives who are in the tile business. And if you can strike up a conversation with her and ask her, she was, oh, my cousin, my son, my nephew, whatever. She'll say, let me get your information and I'll hook you up. All right. That's the best advice I got for finding a skilled trade. Nona, you want to find an Italian grandmother to give you a referral. <laughs> that seems to be the only thing you can bank on nowadays is the fact that Italian guys will never, ever disappoint the matriarchs in the family. And if they get a referral to, a, to business, then they're going to make sure that that job is done right. <laughs> uh, all right. I made some damage on the bottom sidings of the house while using a string trimmer. Yep. How do I change them, especially the ones which are half behind some concrete steps and where to buy in Calgary? Okay. Here's the thing. If you got siding damage, you can buy a little red tool. I did a video on this. It has a little hook. You disengage the locking mechanism. You can lift your siding up and unscrew the, 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 lower, the lower board. On the back of that is going to be a code. Okay. You can type that code into Google. It'll tell you the manufacturer and the color. Then you can call up that manufacturing color and source out a supplier in your area to get replacements. Hopefully the color still on the market. Eh, right? It's kind of a crapshoot depending on how old the house is, but you know, you might be surprised. You might actually get lucky. All right. <laughs> All right. One more question. I'm going to call it. Uh, Anthony, you win. How big of a job is it to enlarge the sink cutout in a quartz countertop so I can put in a larger sink? It's not a big job, but it's specialized tools. Okay. So if you have a local uh, quartz or granite manufacturer in town, you can actually go to them and say, Hey, can I hire you to come out to my house to recut the sink on site? All right. And, and if they're good and they know what the hell they're doing, they'll probably agree to it, give you a fixed price. And they can come out and do that in, in, in place, all right? That's your best option. Otherwise, you're going to have to buy a couple of specialty tools, and then you risk not buying enough quality in that tool that you end up causing damage to your countertop. But it can definitely be done on site. Uh, guys, listen, this is awesome. I've really enjoyed tonight. I'm liking the longer profile a little bit. Hour and a half, get a few extra questions in, helping you folks out. Ah, Yeah, remember, at the end of the day, Home Depot and Lowe's are, are great stores. They're, they're there to help you in a pinch, and they own the market. So you're going to be going to them for your commodities no matter what happens, right? But when it comes down to your fixtures, your flooring, your finishes, your doors, your windows, uh, don't be afraid to shop around because there are a lot of better quality options out there. And as DIYers, you can afford to buy quality materials because you're saving on all that labor. And why in the world would you want to live in a house with cheap stuff when you can have great stuff installed by the best professional on your street. All right. Ha, listen, cheers. Thanks for coming out. And uh, we'll see you in another video again soon. All right. Have a great night.